Hey guys, welcome back. This week, I'll pull out this thingamajiggy doohickey and I'll use it for the very first time to adjust the brand new standing rigging. After a few times climbing the mast, it's all but done. And thank goodness, because now I'm able to lift my dinghy out of the water every night using my much preferred method. Then, check this out. How they make moorings in Luperon. Nothing high tech about it, just some old drums full of cement. Then I'll take a much needed break from the work and go for a group motorcycle ride back to 27 Falls. However, this time we'll do the zip lines. As much fun as it was, that hike up the mountains was brutal. So thank goodness we all got the cool off and some amazing freshwater falls to close the day out. I'm Amy, a Midwestern Kansan girl, and this is my boat, Maritopia. Having never stepped foot on a sailboat, I bought a $5,000 Facebook Marketplace worn out 1973 Pearson and spent two years endlessly working on and learning from her. I've since foregone the conventional lifestyle and have started my solo sailing adventures with the goal to truly immerse myself into the vast diversities that our planet has to offer. My hope is that these videos will help spark the curiosity of others, which ignites the drive to truly live your own dreams. Before I can start tightening any of the new shrouds, I've first got to ensure that the spreaders are raked upwards. Pearson calls for a six degree upward rake, meaning the outer ends of the spreader should be six degrees higher than where they attach to the mast. So, up the mast to go. If you're interested in how I safely climb the mast alone, I've linked a previous video in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Scroll to one minute and 37 seconds. There you'll see where I walk through the various pieces that I use to climb the mast alone. Got everything adjusted. The mast is straight. So it's going to be hard to show, but just put my chin up against that groove and look straight up the mast. And it shouldn't have any bends side to side. Now, what it should have, if you come on the side, look straight up it should have a rake to the back and it, it, right now it has a very slight rake to the back uh, but I can adjust my back stay uh, down at the base so I'm not overly worried about that right now because I actually adjust that back stay quite a bit if I'm going downwind I loosen it uh, so that the head sail the Genoa has a belly more of a belly in it I'm going upwind, I tighten it. And so this angle doesn't bother me much, but it, it still does have a slight rake uh, to the back. Let me see if I can turn that. That'd probably be impossible to see this through the lens of a camera, but what I used is a loose gauge. So this is the cap shroud. This is the uh, middle one that goes all the way to the top. So this is 5 16 wire. So we're looking at the 5 16 scale. And I want it somewhere around 16% uh, of breaking strength, which is 30, 31, somewhere right in there. So when we look at it, it's right at 31. Um, then the, the other shrouds the other shrouds are a little bit different so this is the front one the front lower so we're going to put that at 11-12% eh, of braking strength and these aren't final adjustments this is just a sitting still adjustment uh, final adjustment comes under sail uh, so we've got that at 25, which if we look right here, 25 is about 11.5% of breaking strength. Then, then we're on the back 
silk shroud and it's just a little bit less. And you have to adjust all of these while still keeping the mast perfectly straight. Uh, so I've got that. Now I've got all the cotter pins in. Cotter pin, cotter pin, cotter pin. Uh, now I need to climb the mast again. You remember on the spreader boot, the white thing at the very end outside of the spreader that I've got the spreader boots on. I tied them on here, but not here, or here. Because the uh, cap shroud needs to be able to move up and down through there. See how there's so much slack, it's laying on the ground. So I'll have to wait to put the, to tie it on here and here until after the rigging is adjusted. Well, now I have the rig adjusted, so it's time to climb the mast again. Now that the mast is back up and I've uh, tensioned the rig, uh, I am going to let the swim platform down because now I don't have to raise the dinghy by the davits. Uh, it's actually a pain in the butt uh, with the swim platform in place. And then the ladder, it kind of makes it uh, a pain to raise the dinghy with this. Uh, because the swim platform keeps trying to twist the dinghy as I raise it. Uh, so we'll let that back down and then I will rig the spinnaker pole back on the mast so that I can raise the dinghy out of the water every night uh, that way. So the, putting the swim platform down is as easy as kicking it. And then putting some tension on it with that. Just like that. So, I'm gonna get this swim platform attached and then, uh, or uh, tightened up, and then I will rig that spinnaker pull. This is a good day as any to start the rebuilding of life The roads that lay open are many When the old one's gone under the knife And I can feel the sun on my this works. So I've got the spinnaker pole attached right here. This line right here is to, to pull it to pull it in once the dinghy's on it and then the other line that's hanging down in the water right now is to attach it to the dinghy. This line is the spinnaker halyard. It goes up to the top of the mast then down right here. So this winch right here is what I actually crank it up with. Uh, I don't remember if I've shown this in any other videos, but I much prefer to lift my dinghy out of the water that way. It's it's just easier than, than the davits on the, on the back of the boat. Don't get me wrong, those davits work great uh, for when I'm underway, but lifting the dinghy every single night that way sucks. Uh, other than in the Bahamas where there, there's really no hard growth like barnacles, uh, I raise it up all the time. So, But that's how I do it. Just with that. It works well. So I'm going to clean up and uh, go into town and get something to eat. <laughs> Yeah, 
coming back from eating dinner so uh now i'll show you how i raised the dinghy with the spinnaker pole which is considerably easier and uh, faster than raising it with the davit way faster so I'll walk up and show see all the nasty stuff that builds up on there that is all since I've been in looper on that was pure white when I got here and that's why I left it out every single night but I got the bow tied Here's the line that holds the spinnaker pole in. And here's the line that has the, the bell tied in. And the way that I have these lines tied, it automatically makes the boat heel to the back. I took the plug out so if it rains, the water will go straight out. So that took me all of two minutes. Uh, we're hanging it on the uh, davits takes about 10 minutes so I like this way better let me know what you think of uh, hanging it like this so I could have it just directly in the center hanging right there but uh, my boat is lightweight enough that it would heal the boat over so that's why I pivot it to the front so the center of gravity is closer to the center of the boat. Phew. Oh, and I can't forget to tie this. She done. So in order to make the mooring ball safer for me, uh, they're putting another drum down there, and they will tie that one to the existing one. Uh, they're doing that for quite a few boats that have requested it. He's charging me for it. A hundred US dollars. But, uh, it should be a really good thing for me because it's much more weight down on the, on the ground. But, those drums of cement are what's holding me from not going anywhere and holding all of these boats from not going anywhere. There's already two down there, so this will be three. So they've got the air compressor running and that's what, when he's under, that's what he's using to breathe off. Just an old beer keg with a homemade air compressor. Where's OSHA at? Looks like he's using an old axle, maybe. Yep, we're getting ready to go for a motorcycle ride to 27 Falls. Now that I've got a motorcycle, I'm gonna go for a ride. Pretty much everyone has dirt bikes. I do not. I have a street bike. Oh, there's Nicole. 
So I've been following Nicole for like a year on uh, YouTube. Oh wow. And uh, now I'm here with her. Yeah, yeah. Hi guys. Sailing Arda. <laughs> yeah. Follow Sailing Arda. Uh, it's Nicole's weird, so she spells it weird. It's A R T H A. Yeah, that's accurate. But she's cool. <laughs> so follow her. Thanks. Someone else showed up. Check out who's here. Hey, hey, hey! What's going on? We got ourselves a little bike trip today. Adventure Man Dan. You. So. Dan is the uh, first and only person I've been a Patreon uh, for before I got uh, moved on the boat. The support kept me going in those seven hard months at Riverside. That's oh not all God. sarcasm. That was, that was a rough time. That was a very, very rough time. And uh, one of these days soon I'll go by his boat because my swim platform that I built gotcha. is totally copied off of his. Only Although four tries to get it right. <laughs> Um, but it was such a sweet idea for such a narrow stern that I just had to copy it and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Trust me, I'm not the only one that needed a lot of breaks on the way up the mountain. Okay. So this trip, we're going down the zip line. We all have these funny harnesses on, and I'm... Be careful, <laughs> careful where you're pointing, man. funny things on. People is making me so jealous. That's exactly where I want to be right now. I want to be down there. Ah. I got water. I'm 
not gonna die. This is some of the best feeling water I've felt in a long time. Oh, it's freezing cold and it feels so good. I'm alive. Everyone has the exact same idea. Going to get food. I'm gonna have a little table full of people. Baby. What are you doing? Causing trouble again? That's what he's for. And his beautiful wife. Hey, well, at least Amy's conscious today. <laughs> Does anyone get any pictures and photo, video? Ready? You could edit into your uh, next uh, video. No, thank God. No? I'm no. sure someone must have had something when you were. Passed out unconscious on that sailing vessel the other day. Forget about it. After a great fun day had by all, now it's time to hit the road and head back to Libron. If you'd like to stay up to date and follow along with the adventures, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Comments really do help, so I greatly appreciate them. Next week, I'll get the mast electrical system wired back together. Then, I wear a pair of tennis shoes off the boat for the first time in nine months, all to play my very favorite sport, softball. Because it was July 4th, we played the Canadians. And while it was all in great fun, we sure whooped them pretty badly. After the game, the Dominicans showed their great appreciation for us cruisers by making us feel a bit at home. Last, we'll take another group motorcycle ride. This time to a beautiful beach in Cambiasso.